First of all, how much is the U.S. to blame for this because they withdrew after 20 years in the country? Thank you for having me on, Francine. This is definitely not our finest hour. I guess what comes to mind is what happened to either global Britain or America is back. It's a deadly and dangerous situation for the people of Afghanistan, and this is a huge strategic error and a human tragedy in the making. The growing conflict in Afghanistan has been caused by President Biden's reckless decision to withdraw U.S. troops so suddenly and irresponsibly. And to just give you a perspective, 5,000 civili civilians have been killed in the most recent fighting. We know that 30,000 people a week are fleeing the country. And we know that around a, a million people have been displaced in the last three months, fleeing from areas under Taliban control. Camps are overcrowded, children sleeping in the open, families are fighting over food. We fear that the situation is being replicated across the country at an unprecedented pace. That, that sense of so, abandonment is definitely real. Do you think the U.S. left thinking that the Afghani troops could actually handle this? And is there anything that the international community can now do to try and bolster the troops? Well, look, I think we fail to understand that what happens in Afghanistan is a regional crisis, not just an Afghanistan crisis. It needs to be dealt at a regional level. And I'm, I'm sure you agree that in the, from past history and track, sort of the track record, we've seen that anything that happens in Afghanistan directly impacts security in the West, and particularly the U.S. And it's one of the reasons why the U.S. went to Afghanistan in the first place. At the time the decision was made, there were, there were 10,000, I think, NATO troops stationed in the country. 2,500 of them were American, and fewer than 1,000 British. These are very small numbers. The U.K. has more soldiers uh, in operation in places like Cyprus, and the U.S. has more soldiers guarding its own, its own capital. The decision to leave raises a lot of questions. First of all, what is NATO it's, if it's not able to work through such problems? It, it ought to be uh, possible um, for, for the NATO and, and other allies that when the U.S. decided to withdraw, for them to sort of step in and take over sort of the, the slack, um, considering that, you know, very a small number of U.S. troops actually were stationed there in a non-combat role. So it's totally shameful for NATO in this present moment because this was a massive coalition. And people are forgetting that the, that the Turks, I think, um, have very courageously remained in Afghanistan whilst everyone else is, is leaving. This is definitely an but, abandoned... So what's them. important... Yeah, sorry. So what's the solution? Actually, what is the way forward from now? If this is an abandonment, is there anything, is it now too little too late? Or is there anything that the international community do to try and, and support Afghanistan at the moment? Well, unless we wake up to the reality of what has taken place, Afghanistan might once again become a terror state. The mission was never going to be simple. It is a deeply fragmented, corrupt, uh, sort of paralyzed by decades of conflict sort of, of sort of nation. But I think what we need to now, um, the question that we need to raise now is whether this withdrawal is simply merit military or it's going to be matched by humanitarian, diplomatic, and political withdrawal as well. What I hope to see is that the withdrawal is 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 done now. I want to make sure that the people are not forgotten. This is definitely going to be a human tragedy in the making. And if we don't step in now to avoid a human uh, humanitarian disaster, it will affect the region and it will come back to bite us in a few years to come.